welcome back to the video. Today, we're gonna tackle part two of troubleshooting the sound issue with my Daytona USA twin cabinet. After speaking with Ken at Advanced Repair Center, he explained to me that the soundboard has an expansion board mounted on top of it. So it's two, two PCBs stacked on top of each other. One of them handles sound effects, one of them handles background music. On these boards are two identical 20 pin socketed chips. His suggestion is to try swapping these chips and see if the problem reverses, meaning would all of a sudden I get background music and no sound effects. If that's the case, it's a matter of just getting a new chip. If that doesn't fix anything, the board may have to get sent out for repairs or may need to be replaced. The main issue with getting to this sound board is its location. It is buried deep inside the cabinet. It is underneath where the pedals are and pretty far back. So it's gonna be a challenge, but hopefully we can get it done and move on to phase three, which is getting this, getting this thing repaired. Stay tuned, we're heading down the basement. What we're looking for is what he calls a, a GAL socketed chip, a GAL chip, uh, 20 pin, part number 315-5579. He says right below it is another one. We gotta swap them out. The soundboard has three Molex connectors that have to come off. One's coming from the main board then you got your power coming in from the power supply. And then all, this is your audio out, like we talked about in the previous video. So we have to disconnect these three connections, somehow get the screws off of the PCB feet, and get this thing out. This is no easy task, guys, let me tell you. We're heading back into Daytona, right side, and we are going deep under those pedals and get this board out without damaging it. And then we're gonna have to put it back. All right, let's get it on here. I'm sorry for the bad angle, guys. So this is the sound board back in here. You could see there's a small printed circuit board up here, all right? That's that extension board that Ken Westerfield was telling me about. So according to him, there's a 20 pin chip, socketed chip on the top board and directly underneath it. I would guess it's gotta be this guy right there. I believe it's this one right here. But I, if I had to take a guess, I think that's, that would be it. I'm gonna review the footage and see if I can get a number off that chip. Oh my God. Not good. Let's see if I can get a figure of this. So there's four feet and the screws that hold this down are not screws at all. Look right here, they're nuts. I don't think I have a stubby driver to get that out that'll fit in there. I'm not quite sure what size it is. It's not not gonna be easy guys. Power supply is disconnected so I got a little extra room here. I want to show you guys the Molex connections that gotta come off. So we're gonna come in here. First we got this one over here with the red. Then back here we got this guy with the yellow cables. And then further in the back we have, this is actually one connection back here, um, and it feeds, that's what feeds the, um, the mixer that we showed in the last video. So those three connections have to come off to begin this process. So I'm gonna see if I can pull them off right now. All right, I'm gonna see if I can get the Molex connections out of there. You wanna be very careful with this stuff, guys, because it's old, it's brittle. Okay, that one came out pretty easy. 
value for you. Oh, okay, cool. That came out pretty easy. This dude in the back. Of course, the one in the back is not going to be easy. And I don't want to pull it by the wires. I don't want to pull it out of the Molex by mistake. It's just kind of hard to get leverage in here. This one's really breaking the chops. The other two came off easy. And at the same time, I'm trying to be careful with my hand not to push down on these other capacitors on the top of the expansion board. I don't want to mess them up. All right, guys, I'm gonna try and see if I can confirm what size that thing is. I might be able to get in there with like a ratchet, maybe. Yeah, it's like a, it's gotta be metric. It's like a hair smaller than 5 16 uh, This one's actually, I wonder if it's hand tight. This one is hand tight. Um, now, this nut is on there hand tight, just the one in the front that I could get to. So who knows, maybe I, maybe I get lucky and the back is hand tight and I could just loosen it by hand. That would be awesome. So if not, oh man, I gotta, I don't even know if a ratchet would fit on there. All right, let me reach back there and just see if by hand I could get any movement. Oh, hang on. Oh, she's moving, baby. Oh, my God. I can't believe this. I got it. I got it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So now I should be able, I should be able to pull this thing out of there very carefully. I gotta lift it from the back. Oh, sh there was another. There's one more Molex I missed. That ain't freaking easy. Oh my god, that's gonna be a pain in the neck to get back in there. Holy. I didn't realize that. So there's four connections. So I gotta be very careful here. Not to screw anything up. Of course, this one is tight as shit too. Damn. Got it. Got it. you the soundboard so with the connections just to show you guys so we had this one right here we had this one right here and then it turned out I didn't see this one down there so it's these two okay soundboard is out now I got to give it up to Ken from advanced repair center I repair sega.com this guy is unbelievable. Now I know he was like a lead Sega technician back in the day, so he knows this thing inside inside and out. I mean, this thing is from 1994. This guy was busting out part numbers like the back of his hand. He tells me, he goes, Mike, you're looking for a GAL chip, part number 3155579. Off the top of his head. He didn't know I was calling. That's pretty amazing. So look, here it is, 315-5579, right there. Unbelievable that he could just bust out with that. So this is the chip on the top. And thankfully, it looks like I'm not even going to have to remove this top board because the exact one is right here. There it is, right there. So boom, 
boom. We're gonna swap these two and see what happens. We're gonna see if we can swap the chips. We got a chip puller here. This board is so nasty, it's unbelievable. Just trying to take a little bit of the dust off of here without doing any harm to it. I'm gonna work on cleaning this board. Let me just show it to you real one more time. I don't know if this is coming into frame or not, but it is nasty. So I'm gonna try and clean this board a little bit and then we'll come back and I'll see if I pull those chips. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right, guys, so I didn't wash it or anything like that, but for just a quick, simple cleaning with a soft bristle paintbrush, just very gently, we got it looking pretty good compared to what it was. It looks pretty good. So next, we're going to try and switch out these two chips right there, the 3155579 chips. We're gonna swap them out, and then we'll try and put this thing back in. Chip puller. Let's see what we can do. Now we're gonna take this nice and easy. All right. I'm gonna try and secure the board a little bit. I'll make sure I get this correctly. Woohoo! Here's the chip. It's one down. Now let's see if we can get the other one over here. And... Ooh, okay. We got it. Now for the transfer. In. Success. Chips are now swapped out. We're going to see if we can get this thing back inside Daytona and power it up. Fingers crossed. Gonna see if I can just vacuum out a little bit of the dust in this thing. It is nasty here. It's been a couple years since I cleaned this. All right, guys. Now, let's see if we can get this thing back in there. I'm gonna cut and hopefully when we come back, I'll have it in. All right guys, so chips are swapped, board is back in place, all the connections are hooked back up. We're ready to test it. Fingers crossed, we get background music, no sound effects. Let's do this, let's turn it on, let's see what happens. Here we go. We're back to the old clicking sound. Back to the clicking. So I don't think those chips are the problem. Let's head into the test mode real quick. So we are at square one. Oh boy. Okay. All right guys, it's three weeks later and I just got in the mail the soundboard back from Ken Westerfield in California. Ken runs the Advanced Repair Center, www.irepairsega.com. And he worked for Sega of America back in the day. He was like the main technician and he knows Daytona inside and out. So when I have problems, I go to Ken. In the earlier part of this video, under his recommendation, we tried swapping 
two chips on the soundboard and it did not fix anything. So I sent it out to Ken and Ken had to, he had to put it under a microscope, literally. He told me, you know, he looked it over and he put it under the microscope and sure enough, a, a couple bad traces. He found a couple bad traces under the microscope. He, he said it looked like fluid had got on them. I'm not sure how it's possible that just, you know, the summer, summertime in, in my basement, it gets humid down my basement. Maybe the humidity got to it, but he found a couple bad traces on the soundboard. So he repaired the traces and supposedly we are back in business. So I got this back from him about a week ago and just haven't had a chance to get to it. So today's the day we're going to unbox this. We're going to take a look at the PCB. Uh, see if we could see any of the traces he repaired, see if we could do, see some of his work. And then after that, we're going to install it back into Daytona. And hopefully tonight, we'll be playing some Daytona. So let's head down to the basement and open this puppy up. Okay. Let's see what we got, guys. Our man Ken Westerfield. See what Ken says. Reported problem, music not right. Repair performed. Repaired corrosion on main PCB runs fine now. All right, cool. Yeah. Now he said the repairs were right around the lower chip that we swapped, which would be like right here. I don't know if that's coming in. So that's where I'm looking to see. I see anything. We got a little flashlight going here. I'll tell you, I don't know. I can't see anything. I have no idea. I don't see, I don't see any like jumper wires or anything. So I'm not, I'm not sure. Can't tell, but I'm gonna take his word for it. Okay, let's get this thing back in there guys. Let's get back into Daytona here. Flip the seat back. Let's get the um, metal cage out of here. This protects the uh, main circuit board. And we'll get the floor panel out. There's not much you guys are gonna be able to see because I really gotta get in here again. Uh, I'm just trying to remember how it all went. Okay, I see all four connections I have to make. You know what, that's why I took it out. I took the whole thing out so I had room to work. That's why we had disconnected the power supply. So we are going back. Back to Daytona, baby. We are going back to Daytona. I am hoping, hoping that I can get this thing going, guys. I would love to play some Daytona tonight. Maybe stream on Twitch some original hardware. Oh, that'd be cool, wouldn't it? Okay. Oh, man. Man, this is not, this is not easy, guys. Holy cow. You think four connections are gonna be that bad? But I'll tell you what, the angle you have to catch this thing is crazy. Okay. I think I got one. There it is, okay. Let's 
we got two. Now I think I'm gonna attempt to catch the legs. I got those rear two connectors in. Now, let's see if we can get the legs caught. This thing is like a jigsaw puzzle, guys. Okay. Feeder, feeder caught. Just got the third Molex connection. And now I just gotta plug in the power, which I had problems with last time. So hopefully we get it this time. I think that's it. I think we're in. I think we're in. Okay. Let me hook the power supply back up. See the little locking nuts? This is what holds the PCB down. I'm sure I showed you this already. I'm gonna hand tighten these back on the little bolt nubs that come up from the floor, just slightly hand tight so the PCB doesn't move around. Probably would have made sense to do this before I put the power supply back in, but whatever. Upon further thought, I may not put the back ones on. I think it's a little crazy. So I'll just double up the front ones in case I ever need them again. I'll have them. Because you know what, what are the chances this thing's getting tipped upside down? That's in. And that's in. And that, that fingers crossed, should do it. Let me give you guys an up close look here. Just found something kind of interesting. I told you I got this thing from Nebraska. And here's the proof. Look at this. I never noticed this. Occupation tax, 2011. This thing was in operation in Nebraska. Isn't that kind of cool? See, city of Omaha. Cool. So this baby spent its life in Nebraska. Now it's in New York. So let's just go over. So guys, you can see the feet. If you look closely, you see that right there? So I doubled up those nuts. Another one. Right back in there, right there. You see that one? It's not really focusing, but you catch those two and there's two more in the back. I'm not even gonna attempt it. So we made the connections. You got one connection over here, one connection over here, all right? This is the power. And then way back here, you see these Molex connectors? There's two of them. Those were the ones that are a pain in the neck to catch. You can see the top one. There's actually two of them. There's another one. Believe me. So we are all in. We are all in, guys. Okay, guys, this is it. Everything's connected. We are ready for ignition. We're going to turn this thing on. Fingers crossed. Let's see what happens. Okay, you just check the volume, that's not too high, I don't want anything to blow here. Right. Monitors are booting up. Oh, turned off on the left and we are going exclusively from the right and it is looking great oh yeah
have it guys, Daytona USA, back in action. A special shout out to the Advanced Repair Center, www.irepairsega.com. And thank you guys for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I will see you next time. Thanks. All right, guys, how can I not run a race for you in this video? We're doing advanced. I'm going to show you how it's done. Here we go. And that's 
how you do it. To victory lane. You made it. Woo! Daytona, baby! G-A-M-E-O-V-E-R Now, this is your name with the other champion. Guys, thank you for watching. We will see you next time.